Yes, Simzanzi, welcome back. Back to the future, I'd like to say, because it is right now. And next, we're going to be delving into the groundbreaking collaboration between Loud Rabbits Agency, Academy of Digital Arts Game Alumni, and District 6 Museum, who are bringing history to life through virtual reality in commemoration of the District 6 Museum's 30th anniversary. Now, we have Lars Espeter, technical consultant from GD Outsourcing, as well as Zenit Patal Kaska, executive director of District 6 Museum, who are here to tell us more. Firstly, good morning. How are we doing? Morning. Good, good. Morning. Thanks for having us. Yes, this is exciting. This is so, so cool. But uh, I'm jumping ahead of the Kanye. And let me just plug him Zanzi in on the excitement. Lars, let's talk about this commemoration of the 30th anniversary yeah. of District 6. But we're bringing it to the future. This is perfect timing. And we're including V on this experience. For those that mm -hmm. are living under a rock, please tell us more about this, man. So, um, yeah, what we've done is like for District 6, District 6 is mostly gone by now. Yeah. Uh, the memory starts to fade. So what we thought about to, to do with um, in collaboration with the museum is to bring parts of District 6 back. What better way than to show it in virtual reality? We're literally standing inside of District 6 or at least parts of it and can interact with uh, the people that live there. Wait, so hang on. My perception of this conversation was that you were going to bring the museum to life, but it's bigger than that. You're bringing it's districts. Bigger than that. You're it's bringing much bigger than that. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is, this is not just a game then. I mean, for me, I've always wondered as a kid going to the museum, what is it going to look like? You have these visions or you imagine and you try to take the picture and look at what it might have looked like. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to stretch that far now because VR is bridging that gap, right? Exactly. And it makes it mobile as well. So, so can you show me or talk to me about Absolutely. exactly what we are discussing right now? Because this is quite a hard if thing you... to grasp. I'm like, are you sure we talk about the same thing? Am I going to be able to walk the streets of District Magic 6 right now or parts of it? I don't believe this, Mzanzi, but I think it is going to be true. I think Lars is going to take us through this experience right now. I will. And I will show it to you on screen. We will see a small version of... Obviously, you cannot see what I see. Yeah. But uh, you'll see a small version of what I'm seeing when I'm in, in District in the world. 6. So... Um, Let's right, do take that. Us, Give me a second. It's take technology. Take us into the world, yeah, man. And while you're okay. setting up, maybe Zina and I can chat to you about this. Obviously, this collaboration is huge. It's something that I never thought a museum like District 6 would get involved in, yet you're pushing the precipice of what is possible, essentially. How did this come about, and why do you think it's such a perfect footing and a pertinent option right now? Yeah, just to answer uh, that, I think the universe aligned. Yeah. It was definitely part of our strategic intention to bridge a technological divide that I think District Six might, District Six Museum might have been experiencing. Mm. So, um, and then yeah. Lars met the museum last year, and we thought he has a partner. Um, he offered his information pro bono, and we've been very interested in trying to recreate District Six site so that people can understand. Um, exactly what the site was all about and this great loss. But I, I, I think Lars is about to take off. All right, Lars, are you, are you ready? Take off. Sorry if I'm standing in your way, Zinat. I can't see you, obviously. But um, the center of the, uh, the whole operation here was set up um, okay, so just we can't actually point. move you. You're going to be stuck more or less in that position. I am stuck in this position. Okay, all right. Well, I'll just talk <laughs> to the cameraman to try swing around you and see what they can see right now. Hold I'm on. Absolutely loving Where am this I? Right. Okay, so, cool. Just look like it's uh, disconnected have... from our screen, although you might have the visual on your side. Yeah, we have the visual on my side. Let me check here. Yeah. But uh, while you're checking that, again, maybe Zina, I can chat yes. to you about this because with this museum experience, I mean, I've had the opportunity and the blessed opportunity to have some of these stories uh, been told to me and I've been educated about some of the experiences that one was experiencing back then. Mm. Some of these are very sensitive stories. There's some very sensitive uh, family names that might be involved in the some which I think are still existing today. How have you somehow navigated that sort of very difficult line uh, that you're walking? Yeah. So I, I'll just point to the screen and hopefully you can see it. Lars is currently in a room, an apartment that we've recreated in the District 6 Museum. So this is one area that we've created physically in the museum and now it lives digitally. Oh, just wow. to give you some information, our Former residents were actively engaged in this. We have um, Nambuyo, who is, it's her room. She actually participated in this and guided us to say, you know, we, we used photographs and whatever, inf whatever information the museum had. And then we had our former residents go, ah, but you've forgotten this or, you know, is something else that you need to add. The authenticity was really, really important to us as well as the sensitivity. 
And I think we got that right with the focus group, um, with our photographs and people basically saying to Lars, no, uh, recreate this, this needs to be done. So one of the things we struggled with was memory loss. Yeah. Um, and so we literally had a group of people saying, ah, no, it wasn't this house. This, the other one was to there. To corroborate on the correct. Absolutely. Oh, wow. So authenticity was so important yeah. here. I see Lars, I'm sure, is showing us what he can see via the screen. And it looks like he's just entered the street. Lars, is that correct? That is. So where exactly. are you headed to now? Where exactly are you? I'm, uh, we are on Richmond Street right now. So as you can see, down there is the harbor. Oh, yes. The church. And this, the is, this is based on a very famous photograph where after um, the entire region was bulldozed um, after, uh, after 66, um, you only had a path leading from a, and, and f like a grass field left and right because everything was gone. And yeah. what our students did is they recreated the area based on photos and photographs wow. from scratch. So and everything quick... that you see is done by alumni students. Oh, that is incredible. So a massive collaborative effort to really exactly. bring this world to life and again, making sure that the box of authenticity is ticked. Lars, could you mind just giving a peep at Table Mountain? I see it just up the top of the road there. Is yeah, that, is that our, oh, it is that indeed. Is Table Mountain back there. Of course it has to be. Incredible, there. man. Lars, maybe while you're in the world, I don't know if I can chat to you, please don't fall over on the street right now. Uh, or, or, or I, trip I'm on the pavement. <laughs> but I'm on child side right now, so we, <laughs> we can adjust the, the height of the, the character. So if, oh, okay. if former residents walk through it that grew up there as children, they yeah. can actually experience it from the height that they were when they were. And the there. actual perspective of what your age might have been if you were a kid or an adult. Lars, what does this mean for you in terms of, I think, South Africa being ready to merge with this world of digital and bring more incredible experiences like this to life and to people which I think don't have the access to, the mobility to yeah. appreciate it, or even maybe the money to save up and come down and have this. Is this the world we, we are definitely venturing to for, for many other experiences like this? I would hope so. Um, for, for us, like uh, for the academy, for the students and shows like listen our South African young talents can do this yeah um, I have experience in this field of 30 years in the game industry and uh, I've been setting up courses for 15 and now with GD outsourcing what we which is a sister company to the Academy is what we are doing or what I'm doing is I show this to people in Europe and say like, listen, you want to work with South Africans, oh. then this is the level that we are at. And not only in South Africa, like in Africa in general, uh, the game industry, game development, interactive yeah, media yeah. is a growing thing. Yeah. If you've ever been to the Africa Games Week or Playtopia, yeah. which you should, even if you're not in the industry, it's yes. made for you. Yes. South Africans need to understand that this is a job creator in the future. Mm. For what it means for us, um, apart from the students getting a chance to prove what they can do after studying for a year, this is the future, especially with a project like this where you don't have to have the device, you go to the museum to experience it. This is the first step in the right direction. Yeah, man, and the first step that I think is getting everybody exciting. Thank you so much, Zinat and Lars, for coming through, for showing us the way forward. I think so many people are so excited about this one, and I know for you, Mzanzi, we are literally witnessing history merge with innovation through virtual reality technology. So here's a heads up. Head over to www.ada.ac.za, and you can also head over to district6.co.za to learn more, experience more, and dive into the future of what I think is the most incredible piece of history right here. Well done, guys. This is incredible. Wow.